Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. The carnival has come and gone, but we've still got a really strong program this Saturday night. Several New South Wales stables still in town, and that augurs for good racing this weekend. We get underway with the first of nine at 5.13. In this edition of Weekend Winners, I plan to catch up with leading drivers Shane Graham and Leonard Kane. Both have really good books this weekend. Shane Graham jumps in the hot seat to go through his book of drives for Saturday night. It's a pretty tidy card as well, and Shane's with us. Shane, appreciate the time. No dramas, Chris. It's a really good race to start the program, and you've got a great drive here in Mac Da Vinci, but there's some talent that you go up against, in particular through the likes of Tommy Lincoln and Crunch Time, horses that Mac Da Vinci raced against last week. But importantly, you've got the right draw this week, gate one. You must be fairly confident. Yeah, happy with the draw. He, um, he's been sort of racing quite well since he's been up here without luck so he's finally got the marble so um, we'll have to try and make use of it. Will he be better served over the 2138 metres or is he better over the shorter trips? No I, th I don't think it really matters you know I think he just likes a genuine tempo but um, you know probably the way you know 2100 up at Albion Park will probably suit him down the ground. Does he have the speed to lead? There is some pace drawn to your outside. Ragnar's likely to take a shot. The croupier's got speed. Jumping Jack Jimmy's quick. And Tommy Lincoln's also a go-forward horse. So there might be some early heat here. Yeah, they're probably... Yeah, he, look, we sort of didn't really come out last week just because there was the speed to our inside and outside as um, being Tommy Lincoln and crunch time. But um, from the barrier, look, you know, best place is probably in front and we'll be doing our best to hold up. And having crunch time on your back, uh, you're going to be mindful about that, no doubt. So how do you sort of want to play it, go as slow as possible and then just let rip from the half? Yeah, you know, like we don't, judging by what sort of speed we have to use early in that, you know. But um, look, he sort of, he's racing well and he's quite a nice horse. So we'll sort of keep the tempo even and, you know, if crunch time or whoever's good enough, um, they're good enough. I tell you one thing that stands out with Mac Devin, he's a good style of horse. Yeah, he's a lovely looking horse. He, um... He's a beautiful natured animal and, you know, he um, presents himself well. OK, well, he's a really good chance there in that opening race. Race two again, gate one for you, my master craftsman. I think it's fair to say many of these are probably searching for their best form. This guy's no different to that. But barrier one, does that give him a good shot? Yeah, it probably does. He, um, he raced well. I think he was first up last week at Redcliffe from a little freshen up and he raced quite well, made ground along along the fence late, so, um, you know, barrier one's definitely a help. He does have early speed in his own right, but uh, obviously there's going to be a, a few going forward here at the start. What's the ideal scenario for you? Yeah, I, I'd imagine, you know, without talking to Ian or anything, I'd imagine, you know, if he could be leaders back, it'd be perfect. OK, well, that's my master craftsman. Race three. This is a really good free-for-all for mine. And you've snared the drive on our Uncle Sam. Two starts ago, terrific. I think last week we just put the pen through that run because he just got trapped away on the inside. This is much more suitable. Gate three, he's got a bit of room to work with early. How do you see it? Yeah, that's right. He, um, you know, he's a, he's been a great old performer, and every year he sort of turns up. So he, uh, like you said, two starts ago, he was terrific. So um, you know, it's an even field, but you know, he'll be thereabouts. Uncle Geordie, stable mate, really good last week. Black Sedance was good last time out, facing a class drop. Alta Orlando on a class drop. Bright Energy on a class drop. And then rock and roll icon Kid Montana Scoob Operator, all capable. So it's a race with depth. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, you know, for the carnival being over and that, it's um, a terrific even bunch of free for alls. Is there a chance that you might be in front here at some stage with our Uncle Sam? Um... Yeah, possibly from the draw, you, it might be uh, might be the case. But um, yeah, we'll have to see what Chris Chris is thinking first. Okay, race number four, Soho Sinatra. First look at this guy. He's first up for Charlie Sini, but he strikes a really strong field. Our action man, Life Lavros, Rock Fisherman. How do you rate Soho Sinatra? Yeah, I haven't um, really gone through his form as of yet, but um, Charlie and Chrissy, they do a great job with their horses, and especially the ones that come up from down south. So. He, um, no doubt, he'll he'll run a good race, but like you said, it's a very even even bunch. He hasn't trial, but he comes straight to Albion Park and on a Saturday night. So obviously, you can read something into that. He must be working well. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, like Charlie, he doesn't race them unless they're going well. So he must be happy with him, I'd say. Okay. Uh, race number six, Crazy Shippo. He's been uh, at the rear of the field, or close enough to the rear of the field at his past two. But this is a nice drop back in grade. Yes, the draws probably a little sticky gate number six but 
I think he'll acquit himself well here. Yeah, he's right. He's, um, he has been racing well without luck, so um, if he gets a little bit of luck in that, uh, hopefully we'll be thereabouts at the finish. Does it look simple that Simon's the leader and double or nothing's right on his back? Yeah, well, it sort of looks that way on paper, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, well, we'll see how he goes there. Crazy Shippo, but that is a big class drop for him. Total Diva in race number seven. Uh, last start winner for Pete Hansen. Uh, draws gate two, but this is a mare's race with a little bit of class. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I think I think they, they quite like her in that and uh, think she's above average. But um, like you said, it uh, it's quite a nice bunch of mares there. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how she goes. Any early report on gate speed? No, mm -hmm. can't help you. <laughs> Miss Ruby Sunshine, as you know, uh, better than most, though she can really fly the gate, so she might be the leader, you would say? Yeah, I'd say so. Like, she's, you know, she's probably one of the quicker beginners up here, so um, she looks like she'll just spear straight across. OK. The last race, good quality two-year-old race here, my Alderman Baxter. You've been with this guy uh, at his most recent start when he was able to score. Uh, he's a really progressive type. Yeah, I quite like him. He um, He's a he's a real neat little racehorse, and... Uh, you know, he knows where the winning post is. Um, first time I drove him, he just, he just found it uh, once in the last 100, just race fitness. And then last week, he was real tradesman in winning. So, um, you know, he's got the tricky draw, but um, he's always thereabouts, isn't he? This is probably a little easier than what he's met at his past, too, when you really break it down. Yeah, yeah, it probably, uh, probably is a fraction without Danger Zone and uh, Cat King Cole and them ones in it, but um, then he's probably not drawn quite as good as he was when he did race them, so it probably evened itself out. As far as dangers are concerned, the stable mate, my ultimate Levi, he comes out of last week's Group 1 triad, and Melton Beach, he looked OK on debut. Time wasn't anything great. Do they loom as the main threats? Yeah, I think so. They've um, sort of, you know, it's hard with the two-year-olds. They've all, you know... They sort of can improve week to week. So um, I think it's, you know, like an even bunch. But um, as, as most races, luck in running plays a big thing. OK, well, my Alderman Baxter looks a, a terrific chance there. Sweet Lou's, have you had much to do with them? No, I haven't, no. Okay. This no. one goes all right, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, he does. The best uh, drive for you on Saturday night is? Oh, dear. Um, Hopefully we start the night off good with Mac Da Vinci. OK, race one, number one, Mac Da Vinci. Shane, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Leonard Kane joins us for weekend winners to go through his book of drives for Saturday night, and it's a pretty nice book of drives as well. Leonard's in the hot seat with us. Leonard, appreciate the time. No problem at all, Chris. Uh, race one, Saturday night. This is a good quality lineup. Plenty of depth here and in form runners. You're down to drive Jumping Jack Jimmy. First time behind this guy. What are the expectations? Um, I think he'll run a nice race. Obviously, it's a uh, big step up in grade for him, but um, he's got that... Um, lethal turn of foot at the start. Uh, hopefully that can get him a nice spot up close to the speed early. And um, his run there last start at Redcliffe was was quite good. You know, he rated 55 lead and he fired up a little bit in front. Um, but I think if we can get him across to a pretty forward position early and we can get him to relax, I think he'll, he'll run a nice strong race. Mark Rees has done a really good job with this guy since coming up from that Bathurst region. He's been very consistent. You're probably the best person to ask. Uh, he's got a really good gate speed, as we know, jumping Jack Jimmy. Mac Da Vinci, you've seen plenty of this guy down in Sydney. Can he hold up off the inside? Um, I'm not 100% sure, Chris. Uh, I think we might have the speed to get across him, but in saying that, he does have ears quick off the gate. Um, jumping Jack Jimmy just seems to leave the gate that little bit better. Um, but obviously, time will tell. Yeah, it's a good race, though. Uh, not only Mac Da Vinci, Tommy Lincoln, Crunch Time, they come into this race boasting really good credentials. Oh, for sure, yeah. No, it's a nice, strong race, and it'll be, um, uh, it'll be a good race to s sort of see the results. OK, let's go to race two, Better Vision. Uh, this guy's a last start winner aided by an absolute peach of a drive by Luke McCarthy was when he was able to score. You might need to produce something similar from this draw. Uh, it's not ideal, Gate 7. No, I'm thinking so, Chris. Yeah, no, like you say, Gate 7 is an ideal. Um, there is a bit of speed there too, and it, it is a nice field. So um, I think we're going to have to have a miracle to be able to get it home first in that one, but uh, we'll be doing our best, and I think he can run a race, no, nice race. Sorry. In saying that, though, and looking back at this replay, he is versatile. He's got a little bit of change-up speed, which is obviously a good thing. Yeah, for sure, yeah. No, he's a nice horse. Like you say, he's, um, he is very versatile. So 
you know, whatever sort of happens, he should be right there at the finish, but just sort of the draw probably hinders him a little bit. You're no stranger to this guy. You've sat behind him on a few occasions down in Sydney. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I've had my fair share of drives behind him, so um, I'm well aware of um, how the horse races, so hopefully he runs a nice race. Okay, speaking of horses that you're well aware of, Bright Energy in race three. This is the open, the free-for-all, good quality lineup as well. It's a massive class drop for Bright Energy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, his last few runs have been absolutely massive too. You know, he was held up three starts ago and then the Sunshine Sprint effort was, I was wrapped with that run. You know, he came out late from three of the rail and got a split there late and um, absolutely smashed the line. So... I was over the man with his run there, and then he sort of had to come wide in the Blacks of Fake last week and still finished on strong, um, hitting the line again. So, like you say, it's a massive drop in class for him. If he can be close enough to him, he's well and truly good enough. Yeah, you make a good point. Legitimate excuses he's passed too. The barrier draw took care of him last week and the Blacks of Fake. And as you said, he had the inside gate in the Sunshine Sprint, first time that he's ever drawn gate one, and uh, he really attacked the line once clear behind the likes of Copy That, King of Swing and, and Rock and Marty. We know how good that form is. Is. Are you hoping for a lot of early tempo here for Bright Energy? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Obviously, the harder they go early, he's going to work in our favour. But he's um, obviously, you know, as long as he's close enough to him, I don't really think it matters too much how the race is run. Um, he, he's absolutely flying at the moment, so I think he'll be right in it. If they wind up Alder Orlando at the start, can he get across? Uh, possibly, yeah. He's got massive gate speed. So, um, you know, if they were to light him up, um, he has... I got the potential to be able to find the front. Okay, good race, the free for all. We go across to race five. K Nora Shannon, first time behind this mare, again for trainer Mark Reese. Um, she's probably down on recent form, but this is a race that she could easily find some confidence here. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Yeah, no, like you say, um, yeah, form's probably tapered off a little bit of late, but um, it is my first time behind her, so I don't know a great lot about her, but um, the way the race looks sort of shaped up, it looks like it's a race that she can find form again in. Okay, well, that's Kaynora Shannon. Race six, first string. This is a race that's got uh, got me intrigued. There's a bit of depth here. Simon's going for three in a row. Double to nothing draws behind him. Crazy Shippo, make mine Memphis. They're on class drops. What do we sit with first string? Where's he at right now? Um, I think first string's going really well at the moment, Chris. Uh, two starts ago when he rated 57 at Redcliffe. I was really impressed with that win. He was strong. Um, I never had to move on him and he really attacked the line that night. Last start, he was a little bit off, um, but I think we got him back to his best. And, you know, if we can be close enough early, I think he'll, he'll definitely be right there in the finish. Is that the key, getting as close to Simon as quickly as possible? I think so, Chris, yeah. Um, first string race is better, you know, up the front end, obviously. Um, so hopefully if we can settle close enough to the front end, I think it'll be really hard to beat in that race. OK. Your final drive on Saturday night is your own run of the mare, Wahakan Dream. She is Miss Consistency. You must be thrilled with the way she's performing week in, week out. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, she's been a godsend since we brought her over. Um, and she's, you know, she's been consistent. She, I don't think she's put in a bad run for us, touch wood. So um, she's flying at the moment. She won her last two. She was sharp for her last two. So, um, you know, she's drawn three. She looks to sort of, the way the race is shaped up, she looks to get a good trip, hopefully, there in behind them. And um, I think she'll be rattling home at the finish. And she's versatile as well. She can be up on the speed. She can come from behind like she did last time out. So there's more than one trick to this mare. Absolutely, yeah. No, like you say, she's as tough as nails and she's real quick as well. So um, I don't think it matters too much. If we get the right luck, I think she'll be right there at the finish. This is a good step up, though, for her, taking on the likes of Miss Ruby Sunshine with the band Armour Naughty. They're, they're pretty classy mares in their own right. Absolutely, yeah. No, with all respect, they, um, it is a step up for her, but I think she's good enough to go with them. OK, so just going forward with all the Harkin dream, she's going to stay here and just go through the grades? Yeah, she will for the time being, and then she might head home to Sydney eventually and um, win a few of them grades. Um, but yeah, at this stage, she's staying here for a little while. OK, she shoots for three in a row there on Saturday night. As I said, it's a really good book of drives for you this weekend. Is there one that stands out above others? Um, probably Bright Energy, just because he's flying. Um, so I think probably he stands out the most for me, as long as he gets the right sort of trip. Righto, we'll take the tip with the race three, number eight. Leonard, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you at trackside. No problem at all. Thank you very much. A big thanks to both Shane and Leonard. And as always, we wish them the best of luck this weekend with their book of drives. If you're looking for a good gamble this weekend, I think this horse is just crying out to win. 
Maybe it's not his race this Saturday night because it might not set up perfectly for him. Life Lavros is going to be really hard to beat, but I've been taken with the efforts of Rock Fisherman. This guy is absolutely flying. He draws nicely here, gate three. He might be able to get close to the speed. He'll give you a great sight. This guy's knocking on the door, bursting to win a race. If it's this Saturday night, good and well. If not, Keep following Rock Fisherman. Hopefully he doesn't hit too many snags there on the weekend. We'll get underway with nine races. As I said, action starts at 5.13. We'll see you trackside.